So this is Lightworks 2010. This is uh, the new user interface. This is now the uh, project browser, what used to be the, um, the, the lobby that, we, that you went to. Previously, you'd see green doors. We've now got a project browser. It's much more up to date now and a bit more in fitting with the rest of the Edit Share product range. You can see here I can choose between uh, pick my network uh, storage media space. I'm now working on a Shutter Island media space. I can, here I can create a new project, so I can set a frame rate. I can create a name for the project, and I can create a new project that way. These are my existing projects that I've got open here. I can open my Shutter Island project here. What we can see here is there's another room already occupied here by my other user, which is on the other screen here, which you can't see at the moment. But basically, what we can have is we can have multiple users going into the same project. So what we've got here now is now that we're in our project, you can see here these are some shots here I've imported into our, uh, into our, into our project. Now each one of these, as I click on them, you see it gets a blue border, which means it has focus, which means it's a shot that can go into, into an edit. I can open these shots up into viewers by clicking the little icon here, pops it up into a viewer, and I can do this with as many of these icons, any of these tiles as I want, and I can have as many multiple viewers open at the same time, and I can scrub through each individual one of these. If I don't want to work with multiple viewers, I just want to work with one viewer, I can also pick up and drag and drop each clip into my source viewer and then I can start working with it. So now I can drag using the left mouse button which is the first for Lightworks. Everything previously used to be right, uh, right mouse. We've now changed that so that everything now is moved with the left mouse button, including the viewer as well. You can see as well we've actually changed as well, moved the timeline marker um, reference from the top of the shot down to the bottom of the shot to be more fitting with other NLEs. And you can see now that I can also play this shot. I can mark on the flies to set my in point. There's my in point, the blue mark just there. And wherever I stop is my out point. So if I hold down the shift key now, this is another new feature we've implemented. You can see that the arrow icon has now changed to a little uh, horizontal uh, arrow icon as well. And I can now drag my in and out point anywhere within this shot. And where I let it go is where it will stop. I can do exactly the same thing, grab my timeline marker, and I can find where I want to insert that into my shot. Using the keyboard, we've got the Avid um, preference file. So my keyboard is laid out exactly the same as an Avid. So using the same keys, I can jump to the cut points. I can play my footage. I'm going to jump to a nice cut point here, ready to insert my, my next clip, which will be here. And if, just by pushing insert here, you can see my clip's gone into my edit and it's ready now to be trimmed. If I need needs trimming I can just cliff click it and I can trim it one way or another. One of our new features is um, importing and working with 3D stereoscopic material. We can see here that we've got our um, media on the Avid media bin on the edit share. What we've got here is um, what we've got here is the stereoscopic media. We can see that we've got left and right eye, and we've got left and right eye actually written in the uh, in the file name. So what Lightworks is looking for is the actual name left and name right. What it will do is it will automatically sync up these files when they're dragged and dropped in. Pick them up. I'm going to drag drag them into the Lightworks interface, and you can see here that the import panel now now shows shows one file because it's recognised the left and right eyes. It's syncing them automatically. And when I click do it now. What I end up with is a shot down here that's been imported. And you can see that it's sunk, automatically sunk the left and right eyes together. Now what I can do now is on my project card up here, I can set on the 3D panel here, configure. I can set how I want my 3D to appear. Whether I want it to set side by side. I can just view left eye only if I want to. I can view right eye only. So if I'm just looking at making cuts and edit, I don't have to wear my 3D glasses, I can just edit as normal. If I want to output to my 3D monitor, one of the options we have here is side by side. Click do it. Basically what we see now on our output monitor is side by side, left and right stereoscopic material, and we can play that and see that in 3D. So what we can see now is we've got two systems, both Z800 systems connected to an edit share central storage, both in the same project, they're in the Shutter Island project, we can see that I'm in this room here and my colleague is in the other room here. You can see it actually says occupied by Nick. So what I can do as well now is 
with the project sharing is that I might have some shots and sequences I want to show my editor. So simply I've, what I've done here is created a new gallery which is uh, like a bin in uh, Avid. I can drag in my media files here. These are a couple of shots that I want my editor to be able to work with. A couple of sequences here as well. I'm going to name this gallery. I'm going to call this IBC 2010 Matt. And save that. Just by hitting return and saving it, you see it's turned green. That means it's permanent. It means the other user in the other room can now see that gallery. So if we move over to this screen over here, I can right click my gallery icon, list permanent galleries, which is the one I just created. You see I've got this long list here of information. The gallery that I created was called IBC 2010 Map. There it is. It's found it. Click open. And there we are. It's exactly the same layout as it was when it was created. And I can now take those media files and I can start working with those. Now what we've got is that both users sharing the same project, sharing the same media and the same edits and logs. We can see that we've got real number six IBC 2010 edit open here and the same edit open in the uh, other, other room on the other system on the other screen. So what I can do now is I've got read and write access to this edit. I can put it in and out of record mode, which means I can make trims and I can add to the edit, I can remove from the edit. So I've got it in record mode and I can make a change. So I'm simply just going to mark a section of my edit here and delete it. And automatically that's been updated straight away in the other project on the other screen. And I can start making changes in real time to my image. And you can see on the other screen as well that the color effect that I've applied has actually been applied to the other timeline as well. So there's a couple of changes I've made. And I now want to give permission from my edit here to the other user. So I want them to start making some changes themselves. In Lightworks, I give permission. So I, in order to transfer the permissions now, I want to give this permission read and write access to my assistant editor. I can click the padlock icon here, which brings out the permissions panel. And you can see that the owner, which is me, Matt, I can now transfer ownership to Nick, who's the other user on the other machine. You can see what it's done there is it's taken me out of record mode and I've now got read-write access to this edit.